the turn of the century, uh, between the 18th and 19th century, a railway line was built with from Cairns through to Coranda, and that railway line went right out through to all the gold fields. So instead of uh, coming up here, getting on a horse and cart, heading out to the gold fields, which was still a pretty dangerous trip to do, uh, the miners decided to just take the train. How easy was that? So Port Douglas disappeared into uh, an old history. Most of the 19th century, they had a population of about 150 to 250 people. In the 1970s, we had a businessman come up here, an Australian businessman, a gentleman by the name of Christopher Scase, come up here, had a look around, realised the potential of Port Douglas being a tourist town, being so close to the rainforest and the uh, Great Barrier Reef, as well as the natural harbour. Made an ideal location to build a really big resort. Now, he wanted to build the biggest and the best resort ever. So he got together with a whole bunch of investors and they pumped in hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars into his place to build the first big resort and they built the Sheraton Mirage.
tires. Semi submersible coral viewers operate from the end of the platform near the stern of our vessel. The semi submersible vessels enable you to be seated and view the spectacular corals and brilliantly coloured reef fish through underwater windows as you cruise close to the coral outcrops. Departures are approximately every 15 minutes throughout the day, with the last departure at about 2 pm. Some semi submersible trips are reserved for non English commentary. Please remember that the area we are visiting today is a marine park, and collecting of anything is strictly prohibited. <laughs> Right hand side there with black and white faces, that's a good 
example of a fish that looks nothing like its name. They're called fox face rabbit fish. Also down on the right, some soft coral there that's moving around with the motion of the ocean is called spaghetti coral. It looks a little bit like cooked spaghetti. Don't forget to look down to the left too. There's plenty of fish action down there. Just passing over a school of scissor tail fusiliers. There's some beautiful plate corals up to the right hand side there. Mm -hmm. We will be coming back down. Oh, there's a nice big cuttlefish on the right hand side there. It's a Pretty, pretty coral guards along this edge. We will be turning around and coming back up this edge, so for those on the left, you'll get to see that same view on the way back.
sending up to about 25 centimetres a year. And of course when we have storms and cyclones come through out here, it's those faster growing, more fragile corals, like your scattered corns and your plate corals, that are damaged first. So they do rejuvenate reasonably quickly. Can you have another question? And we just call uh, the cyclones or the, the damage out here from storms and cyclones, we call it Mother Nature's way of law knowing or pruning the reef. And in reality, it is just creating more of a platform for other corals to eventually grow on top of. And we're just coming along this uh, reef edge now, and it is quite a good spot to spot turtles. So do keep your eyes peeled for any turtles. They do tend to camouflage in quite well though amongst the reef, especially if they're just sitting on the bottom, not doing much at all. They're much easier to see, of course, if they're swimming directly past the window, which doesn't happen very often or if they're heading up to the surface for a breath of air.
on not being up to some of the connections and uh, well if you're crew aboard it's all uh, fine we'd like to say thanks for spending the day with us we trust you have an enjoyable one